so we are all currently experiencing increasing cost of living. And this can be really hard to manage when it's coming at us from all different angles. Today, I'm going to focus on helping you reduce your food spend and on ways that you can do that fast. So food feels like something that is within our budget that we have control over. So when other costs are rising, like our energy bills or you know our mortgage, these feel like things that we have less control over. Yeah, we can do a few things around the home, but there's not any real substantial steps that we feel that we can take. Whereas when it comes to food, we know that we could spend a little bit less than food. So how do we go about doing that? So I have five top tips for you today that I have practiced myself and can absolutely confirm that they will help you reduce your food spend. Now, I'm not here to give you ways that are going to just like stop you from eating the things that you love. That is like not okay with me. What I'm here to do is to help you find ways that allow you to eat the same amount and kind of the stuff you enjoy, but without kind of the excess costs. So the first one is one that you've probably heard a lot before, and this is meal planning. Now, I love meal planning, and I have done several different levels of meal planning. In its most basic meal planning is just deciding what meals you're going to have in the week. So this is probably where my family and I are at now. We have definitely been in the, like, really planning it out stage and now we just go right we're gonna eat seven you know dinners for this week and a couple of lunches what do we want and we just write out the seven meals and then buy what we need for those seven meals in the past we did not shop like this we used to shop and just go oh yeah fancy that fancy this you know oh yeah we've got loads of meals and then things would go out of date and we'd end up bidding them or we decide on the day that we didn't really fancy those things now if you really want to be good at meal planning, you will maybe pick the days that you have each meal. So you might go, right, Monday we're having this, Tuesday we're having that, Wednesday we're having this. And if you look at actually what's going on in your life, so maybe you know on Tuesday you're going to be working late, or maybe you know on Wednesday you take the kids swimming so you need a quick dinner. Maybe you know that on Friday you're normally going to reach for like the takeaway menus and order something. So you can buy like a meal that you love, maybe get some curries that you can put in the microwave. Whatever it is, you can plan around these events. And when you do that, you reduce the food waste and you reduce some of the temptation to maybe go out for meals or like I say, call for a takeaway. I strongly recommend that you do write down your meal plan though. That you can use like a fancy like printout and if you want one of these, just you know send me an email at charlotte at lookingafteryourpennies.com and I will send you a copy of my meal planner that you can write on and you can stick on your fridge. If however you prefer to do it on your phone, you can just you know use your notes app, whatever you want, but make sure you are writing this down. We generally use like scraps of paper at the moment and just stick those on our fridge because then we can fold them over loads of times. Another thing to consider when you're meal planning is the actual costs of the things. So you might be thinking, oh yes, I'll fancy steak, or you know, I fancy this meal or that meal. If you really want to reduce the costs, have a look in the shops at what is cheap. Have a look at what's on offer. And you can do this like online uh, and look at the kind of like online versions of shops to see the offers and then plan your meals around that. There's a huge amount of money that can be saved in this. And this is why I put it right up front and first and I've spent a long time talking about the impact that this can have. It's probably a game changer. So if you haven't meal planned before, maybe this is your time to try and see how much you can reduce your food spend by. So the second tip I have is another like golden oldie, okay? It is to eat what's in your cupboards. Like, and I'm not trying to like teach you to suck eggs here. If you have a look in your cupboards, if you have a look at what's in your freezer, if you have a look at what's in your fridge, think about how many meals you can make out of what's there. Give yourself a challenge. Maybe to go like, three more days before you actually go out and do the food shop. Can you stretch that to five days? Can you make it a week? How long can you go before you actually need to do a full shop? Yes, you might need to get some milk or some bread, but can you go without buying any actual dinners or lunches for the next few days? Another great way to approach this is to actually keep an, like, an inventory. So you can write down all of the different things that you have and then use that to inform your meal planning. So things that we quite often have in our cupboard are things like uh, microwavable packets of rice, uh, noodles, tins of tuna, baked beans. So we can sit there and try and plan meals around this. Maybe one day we could you know, do a curry and use up the rice. Maybe one day we could make tuna fish cakes. And you, we can use these to make 
meals that actually reduce our spend in the next shop. So you don't necessarily have to just live out of what is in the cupboards, but just use these as a basis of your meal planning and to help reduce the costs of your shopping. So number three is a great one and it's probably one of my favorites because it genuinely reduces the amount you have to spend. And this is to use food waste apps, specifically Olio. So Olio is there to redistribute food that you don't want or supermarkets don't want. So there are people in the community that will collect food from your local supermarkets or coffee shops, and they will post it on the Olio app. You can then go and you know, say, yes, I want this, and you go and pick it up from the house and it costs you nothing. So they have all sorts of food here. I regularly see lots of like fruit and vegetables. I see, you know, um, you know, sliced meats. I see, you know, lots of bread and things like that. There's also things like milk. Now these are normally very close to their like use by date or their best before date. But that doesn't mean that you can't freeze these things. I quite often buy things like, you know, bread or rolls or, you know, cr crumpets. So I'll pick these things up for free and then just shove them in my freezer. And then I can just defrost them whenever I need them. As somebody who is a celiac, so I need to eat a gluten-free diet and these products cost a lot of money. So whenever I see them on the Olio app, I will you know, request them, go pick them up and stash them in my freezer as soon as I get them. Now, lots of this food also goes to things like you know, the food bank. So it also helps the community too. The food that is sent out into the communities is either you know unwanted by the food banks or is surplus or there wasn't somebody available to collect it. By you picking up these foods, you are preventing this food from going to waste and you're gonna save yourself a few quid too. I challenge you to see how creative you can be with the stuff that you get for free. Tip number four is to use your loyalty points. So here I'm talking about things like you know, your club car points, your nectar points, but also things like you know your Nando's rewards and uh, you know your boots points and these sorts of things. You can use these things to buy food. Now you don't necessarily have to use them to buy food that's in the supermarkets, you can use them to buy like meals out. So I love using my Tesco club card vouchers and you know tripling up on those points and then taking my family out for dinner, okay? It'll be really interesting to see how you, how far you can make those you know, club card points go. You know, same with things like nectar points, same with your boots vouchers. You could use these for like meal deals or snacks when you're out. Have a little look, go on a little bit of a like loyalty point treasure hunt and see how many of these things you can find. If you want to take this one a little step further, then why don't look for things like gift vouchers for places like John Lewis or Marks and Spencers. These can be used for food too. I quite often get these for like Christmas or birthday presents, and then sit there and I'm not quite sure entirely what I want to do with them, but they can make for like great treat meals, you know, like get a dinner for two and you know, a nice bottle of wine or some drinks or something like that. And then make a really great special treat that I'm not paying for out of my pocket. Now, my last tip, tip number five, is to make the use of the apps that are out there. So for example, Quidco, Top Cashback, they quite often do cashback promotions if you're like a new customer. So let's say you want to try a new home delivery from somewhere like Morrison's. Have a look on these places first and see if you can get some sort of cash back or some sort of special deal from them. Another great app is Shopmium. This allows you to try like new products or you know products that are on some sort of special promotion at a discounted price. Now this could be great, they have things like shreddies on them recently and my kids just eat shreddies all the time. So this can be a great way to get these things at a discount. I have dropped some of the links to these things in the description below so that you can just Click there and go straight to them. There are lots of different apps out there that can help you reduce your spending on food. So have a little look, check out my website, I have more on there, and just see how creative you can get with reducing your food spend. I hope that I have given you a good amount of tips to be working on and some great fast ways that you can actually reduce your food spend. With April just around the corner and all sorts of increase in prices happening at that time, this could be the perfect time to focus on this area of your budget and see what difference you can make. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional tips and I might make a part two to this video that uses all of those.
Whilst you're there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and make sure that you come back and join me in the next video. Thanks for watching.